Rheumatoid arthritis just got a new FDA approved treatment and it's not an injection or a pill. It's a tiny implant in the neck that stimulates the vagus nerve for about one minute a day to help calm inflammation. Today, let's talk about if you qualify for this, what the evidence shows, and what are the real world pros and cons of having it put in. And in just a little bit, I'm going to show you a quick decision tool so that you can ask the right questions at your next doctor visit. I'm Dr. Banasali, rheumatologist, Plant Forward MD. Let's dive in. Most rheumatology care starts with DMARDs, which are disease-modifying drugs, usually pills, sometimes injections, and this is usually the first level. And then if the disease is severe, moderate to severe, we can go up to the next level, which is biologic medications. You may have heard of drugs that are anti-TNF inhibitors, like Humira, Enbrel, that class, or IL-6 medication, rituximab. We have quite a few nowadays. And these help, but unfortunately not everybody. That's why this nerve-based option is such an incredible shift in our world. It works through the nerve immune reflex instead of just adding another immune blocker. So it's a completely different way to attack the same condition. Okay, what is this device? It's called the Setpoint System. It's a mini stimulator about the size of a penny with a silicone sleeve around it that they're going to implant along the vagus nerve, specifically the left side. They don't do both sides. And it sends these brief timed pulses to tap into the body's inflammatory reflex so that it can influence the inflammation. What's really interesting is in the study, it was moderate size, the major study that they had going on. It was about 242 patients and they didn't tell them what time of day they were getting the stimulation because they wanted to see if they could feel it or not. Generally, it was around 4 a.m. and out of the whole study, apparently only one patient could tell what time it was. So really, it's not meant to be felt. You're not getting shocked or anything like that. The device sends a short daily signal through the vagus nerve, which is part of the body's built-in inflammatory reflex. This reflex then tells your immune cells, hey, don't release so many chemicals like TNF. We don't want too many of those. And this can help calm down that overactive inflammation that you usually see in rheumatoid arthritis. And this is a hands-off device. Once it's implanted, you don't have to touch it, but you do have to charge it. But what's really interesting is the way you charge it. In the study, the participants, they had to wear this kind of scarf-like thing on their head and they had to wear it only about five minutes in the week to charge it. Can you imagine? I would love it if my phone charged this fast. The device is programmed with an iPad, so that'll have to be titrated after it's put in. So who's a good candidate to have this device put in? If you have moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis, so not the people that have very mild RA or are already well controlled on methotrexate or hydroxychloroquine or even a biologic, if you're well controlled, this wasn't the group that they wanted for the trial. So they have moderate to severe people who have failed at least one biologic or advanced treatment of some sort. So whether it was a jack pill like Zelgens or Rinvoke or an injectable biologic. So if you have really stable disease and are well controlled already, this may not be the best for you right now because we just don't have those long-term studies. But if despite multiple different medications, and I know I have patients like this, I know you might be a patient like this, you really need something more to help you. This could be something we can do. Another group that it may work for is when you get a lot of infections and we can't give a biologic for whatever reason. Maybe it's you're getting pneumonia or lots of sinus infections or something else and we're worried about the immune system, this could be an option. Or if you have a lot of needle phobia and you don't want to take one of those injections, of course, this is a device that has to be implanted. But even some people where it's really hard for them to get their medications for whatever reason, whether it's work or the inability to drive and get it. For example, if you don't have transportation, there are a lot of different reasons why people can and take certain medications. But this is still a surgery, so you have to think about that and there are potential complications because it's a surgery. There were patients who had issues with hoarseness, so their voice was affected, or their vocal cords were damaged. And a lot of this was reversible, but it can happen. Serious complications can also happen. It wasn't too frequent in this study though, but it's possible. So vagus nerve stimulators for rheumatoid arthritis are brand new, right? 2025 finally been approved, but vagus nerve stimulators have been used for many other conditions over the years. So there is data out there on that specifically, just not as much for RA. And we always love to see long-term data before we tell our patients, hey, you should go for this because we just don't know what this means five years from now, 10 years from now. 
but here's another option for people that are not maybe getting the best effect from the available treatments that are currently out there. Another interesting part of this trial was that this was a tough to treat population. Usually when you give somebody their first medication, your hope is that it's going to work really well. But as you give subsequent medications, we know that they may not work as well. And in this group, they had definitely tried other medications, a lot of them more than one biologic. And yet there was an effect. There were people who absolutely did feel better. Not everybody, but there was a group that benefited. So about one in three people who got the device implanted had their arthritis symptoms improved by at least 20%. So it wasn't necessarily 100%, but there was some improvement. So 35% improvement compared to the placebo group or the sham group, which was 10, 24%. And when they followed people for a little bit longer, for 24 weeks, they saw that even more people had improvement. They did look at MRI data as well. So we like to see MRIs on some of our patients because we're worried that they're gonna get erosions, kind of like little holes forming in their bone from active RA. And this study wasn't meant to look really at this very hard, but they did see that there wasn't necessarily progression, like there wasn't any more erosions in these patients, which is a good thing. A question I had that wasn't quite answered by this trial is that if you're doing fairly well, but not quite where we want you to be, and maybe you're 70% improved, but we feel like 30% we could do a little better, is it possible to put in a device and still switch your biologic or continue a biologic? That question wasn't answered, so we're waiting for more long-term data to see how that kind of pans out. And remember, again, this is a surgery, so your friendly rheumatologist is not going to be implanting it in you. I wouldn't know how, but it'll be a surgeon, preferably a neurosurgeon, and even though it's not a complicated procedure, it does have to be done by somebody who has experience in this. So it won't be everyone getting it, at least not right now. But there are definitely pros here. It's a new treatment. It's not a medication or a pill, a systemic immune blocker. It's completely different and targets another system in the body. And it's only about a minute a day. It's hands off, just a five minute weekly recharge. It can be deactivated or removed. We don't yet know if it can be combined with biologics. Still waiting on that. And it's a one-time implant instead of repeated times having something put in. Okay, but cons are that it is surgical. You can have device related risks like hoarseness or some vocal cord dysfunction. You could get incision issues, you can get an infection there. Rare, but there are potential complications of any surgery. We don't know how long this will help. We just don't have that long-term data. And again, we don't know the best combo to do this with in terms of medications, since people are not getting 100% benefit, which our aim is always to get the most we can, even if it's not 100%. And it is a weekly recharge. Even though it's way better than my cell phone recharge, it still needs to be charged. There are some ear clips on the market and some other kind of devices. Make sure if you're looking into it, that you're looking into the correct thing because those were not the set point system. So recheck on that. There have been clues in the past of how doctors think that the nerves and arthritis can be connected. For example, if somebody has a stroke and half the body is paralyzed, usually on that side of the body, if they have a history of RA, it doesn't really bother them as much. So the inflammation is down, the swelling is down. There has to be some connection between the nerves and the joints, the immune system. This, along with other clues, is what led researchers to kind of look at the nerves to see if that could be helpful for rheumatoid arthritis. And remember, even with breakthrough tools like this, which we are very excited to have something else in our toolbox for whoever it can help, still, it's important to have an anti-inflammatory eating pattern, regular movement and strength training if you can do it, stress skills, and good sleep. This can improve how you feel and support your overall health, no matter which RA treatment you're on. Tech works best when the basics are in place. So if you're going to go to your rheumatologist, here's your checklist on questions to ask if you're interested in this implant. Am I a candidate based on my history and other health issues? What are the risks in your particular case with the voice box, hoarseness, or other potential complications? Insurance access, prior authorization, what are the expected costs and who does this surgery? Because not everybody's doing it yet. Very few centers have already started this. They're planning to expand more nationally in 2026 but it's going to start with bigger centers in the area. And most importantly, how do you monitor for benefit? And can you change your medications with it? And what do you do if it doesn't respond as well as you'd like it to, to respond? Can you deactivate it? What are the other things you could do with it? Drop your questions on the specific treatment if you have any, and I'll see you next time at Plant Forward MD.